Today, we're going to talk about things you should consider when looking for a tripod for landscape photography. It can be overwhelming when you first start looking for a tripod for landscape photography, whether it's your first tripod or maybe you're just not super happy with your first tripod you bought and you're looking to upgrade. There's so many different variables, everything from material to height to types to price. It's really easy to get overwhelmed with what tripod you go with when there's so many choices out there. And something that makes it even more difficult is tripods, there's a little bit of subjectiveness to it. There's certain features that aren't right or wrong, but just what you as a landscape photographer prefer. So again, like so many things, there isn't a 100% go buy this and this is gonna what's, what's gonna work for you because what I like might not be what you like, even though there's really no technical advantage to one over the other. So while I may have a favorite tripod, my friend may have another and his choice may be 100% as equally valid as mine. So that doesn't make picking a tripod out any easier. So when there's all those choices and types and subjectiveness to it, how do you choose a tripod for landscape photography? So instead in this video, what I'm gonna do is highlight some of the features that tripods have that you should consider when shopping for a tripod. And then it'll sort of be up to you to decide which features are important, which aren't as important, which styles of leg locks do you like versus what styles of leg locks do you not like. And then you can start to narrow that list down, apply a budget to it and find the tripod that's gonna work for you. And while I might mention a feature that I prefer, that doesn't mean it's the right feature for you. And by knowing these key features to look at, hopefully that'll help you narrow things down in your own search for your tripod for landscape photography. So first up is the size of the tripod. And when I talk about size of tripod, I sort of have two things in mind. One, how high can the tripod go? And two, how small does it fold up to? Those are sort of the two size considerations to make. And really the variables in this are twofold that I see for how high a tripod can go. First is how tall are you? Obviously, if you're five foot four, a tripod height is gonna be different than what you might want if you're six foot two, just by nature of how your body is built and where your eye level is. So that's gonna be one difference in it. The other thing is how do you find yourself shooting? Maybe you tend to find yourself doing low compositions more often than high compositions. Maybe you find yourself doing a lot of eye level compositions. So knowing how you sort of like to shoot might dictate what sacrifices you might be willing to make in a tripod. If you don't do a lot of super high compositions in your landscape photography, you might not be looking for a super tall tripod. Or what's tall to you because of your actual height might change. But that's one thing to keep in mind is how tall does the tripod go? You can usually see those listed on the manufacturer's website. And one thing to keep in mind is the tripod manufacturer is typically measuring from the legs to where the ball head would go. So right here is where the head of the tripod will go, which we'll touch briefly on later in the video. But keep in mind, that's what they're measuring to. So then when you add a ball head on, which is from here to here, you're gonna get another three to four inches depending on the, the tripod head that you put on. So keep that in mind when you're looking at tripod heights. You're probably gonna end up by the time you put a tripod head on it, another three to four inches above that. So just keep that in mind. So tripod height is a big thing to consider when picking out a tripod. The other element to consider is how small does it pack up? And this plays a big role in portability and how you're gonna carry it on your bag. So for example, this tripod, I specifically bought a little more travel in mind, and the tripod collapses down fairly small, not too big, so it can actually fit on the side of my pack fairly nicely and makes it nice for travel, or if I'm on tight trails with woods and branches and things like that, this will tend to catch a little less because it's not sticking so high up above the backpack, the camera bag. Whereas this one, it's just a little bit longer legs like this. So at the end, with enough leg sections, it can actually get up higher, but it doesn't pack down as small. So that is one consideration too. And where that really gets in, the two big things I think collapsed size of tripod really count is if you travel a lot, so if you're flying and you wanna be able to make sure you don't look too obvious with a big tripod on your camera bag, that's where something a little shorter collapsed height might be important. And the other area where the collapsed height can be important is if you do a lot of hiking on narrow wooded trails where there's lots of branches and brush trying to grab at your camera bag and catching on things. It's real easy for a tree limb to catch if this is sticking above your camera bag to catch and then sort of just pull you back a little bit. So if you're doing a lot of that kind of hiking, you know, on the East Coast or maybe the Pacific Northwest, that might be a consideration. Whereas if you're in the desert Southwest where there's a lot of desert and less brush of less trees, that might not be as important consideration. So those are the two things I would consider with size. How tall does the tripod go and how small does it collapse? And depending on what you're looking for, how you frame your compositions, how much travel, how much portability is important to you will help influence which of those size ranges you should be looking at as you look to select a tripod. 
The other consideration is weight of the tripod. This is how much does the tripod weigh. This will be an important factor depending on what kind of landscape photography you do. If you tend to drive to an overlook, pull the tripod out of the trunk, set it up, take a shot from the overlook, weight may not be as important because you're not having to carry that tripod very far. You may not even be putting it on your camera bag. You're just taking it out of the car, walking 100 yards with it and setting it up and you're good to go. If you're hiking into your destinations multiple miles or through rough terrain or steep terrain or anything like that, then weight could get more important because it's gonna wear on you to carry a heavy tripod into the field. So you may want something a little lighter. The other factor is portability. If you do a lot of travel, a lot of times it's nice to, um, if you're flying, to be able to just not have to have a ton of weight on your bag, just to make it easier to maneuver through the airport and load up into the plane and everything like that. So portability can be an important consideration as well when it comes to weight. So what influences the weight of a tripod? And this is a question I get a lot. There's different materials, with the big two being, these days anyways, being aluminum or carbon fiber. So carbon fiber is going to be a little lighter than an aluminum tripod, and an aluminum tripod is going to be a little heavier. So right here, we've got an aluminum tripod. It's got some heft to it. Um, even though it's not that much bigger than this other tripod here, it weighs a fair amount more because it's got aluminum legs, aluminum center column. Everything's aluminum. It's just not that light of a tripod. Whereas this tripod here has carbon fiber legs right here, nice and sturdy, but it weighs less. It doesn't weigh as much as the aluminum tripod. So that's where the materials really come into play is if you're looking for a lighter tripod, you're gonna probably be gravitating towards a carbon fiber tripod. However, when we start to apply the budget principle, which we'll talk about a little later, that might move you back into aluminum legs for your tripod because the aluminum's gonna be a little less expensive than a carbon fiber tripod. But at the end of the day, those are the two general materials these days is aluminum and carbon fiber carbon fiber being a little lighter. So if you're concerned about weight, whether you're carrying it somewhere or traveling with it, carbon fiber tripods are probably gonna be where you wanna look as long as your budget permits. Next decision that comes up is, do you want a tripod with a center column or without? This tripod does not have a center column, so the legs is as high as it gets. There is no center column right here. So the tripod can only go as high as the legs allow it, and there is no column to loosen up and raise up. So. This one does not have a center column. This one does have a center column. And as you can see, you open the legs up here like this. And right here is a center column. Legs can be fully extended. And then this raises up, Let's show you like this. So you can see this center column extends upwards. Now, this is probably one of the most debated features of a tripod that's out there on the internet amongst photographers. And I'm gonna say up front, there's really no right or wrong with this. The key is to be aware of what some of the cons of a center column are so that you know how to work around them and how to maximize the benefit of a center column. So some of the debate of a center column is that, so as you start to extend the center column, you start to put the weight of the camera above the more stable base of the tripod. And I've done a whole video on the pros and cons of a center column, and I'm gonna to link to it in the video here and down in the description. I highly recommend going to check that video out because I dive into it more extensively. For this video, just know that if you start to raise the center column, you start to introduce some potential instability, and it also can keep the tripod from being able to go quite as low because the center column starts to get in the way. Now there's ways around this. Some of the center columns can slide out and then you can flip them upside down, things like that. So again, there's ways around it, but it is a con if you do a lot of low compositions frequently. The benefit to a center column is that you can get more height out of a tripod because it will extend up on one piece of material, whether it be aluminum or carbon fiber, as opposed to needing to lengthen three legs. So because of that, you can sometimes end up with a more collapsed size of the tripod, but yet still retain a taller tripod out in the field. My biggest recommendation is if you go with a center column, only use it if you've maximized the extension of your legs, then you have that option to extend the center column. So really, center columns, probably one of the hottest debates in landscape photography forums between whether you want a center column or not a center column. As long as you are aware of the pros and cons of a center column, again, video link in the description, then that choice is really up to you which works best for you. And then there's just a couple utility features of a tripod that don't make or break it, but can be nice to have. One is leg locks. I prefer the twist lock, so you just sort of twist like this, 
and open like that, nice and easy. They also make flip locks, which are little levers you flip up and then the leg slides down and then you flip it back closed. People have their different preferences, not a right or wrong. This is one where you decide which type of leg lock you like and go with that. But if you only like flip locks, then you wanna make sure you narrow your shirts down to just flip locks. If you only like twist locks, you wanna make sure you're only looking at tripods with twist locks. Load capacity of the tripod can be important depending on what kind of camera gear you have. So if you're shooting with a larger DSLR and big heavy lenses, then you're gonna want something that has a higher load capacity to be able to make sure you're getting a stable platform for that camera. Load capacities are listed on the manufacturer's website. Go ahead and take a look at them. What I would recommend doing is determining what is the heaviest combination you're apt to use out in the field. Probably either look up the manufacturer specs on what that weighs or put it on a scale at home and see what it is and make sure you come under that. Modern day tripods, I've, most of the ones I've seen in unless they're sort of more for vlogging, the handheld ones are gonna hold most of the loads, but be sure to check just in case, because load capacity can be important. And another handy little feature is a bubble level on top of the tripod. So like right here, there's a bubble level on this tripod, so I can tell how flat, how stable, how level do I have my base of my tripod. It can be handy, I a lot of times just eyeball I always encourage you to make sure you get this level and not just rely on the ball head to level out your camera if you're on a slope. I usually just sort of eyeball it, but where it can get really important is if you're doing panoramas and things like that, you really wanna make sure you've got things really level so that when you're doing that panning motion, you're able to maximize the number of pixels you're able to get. So in those more precise situations, the bubble level can be important, and that just might be a feature you wanna look for in a tripod. So tripod heads is another consideration when picking out a tripod, more something to be aware of because a lot of the mid-range to nicer tripods are gonna just be the tripod legs itself. So from this portion down and the head is gonna come separately. So when you're researching these, the mid-range to nicer ones, you'll be researching this, and they're gonna assume you're gonna bring your own tripod head to the game because you probably have your preference. And really, tripod heads are a whole other video, and I'll do one on those in the future, but let's just touch on some of the highlights. The one, like I said, mid-range and higher tend to have come without a tripod head. Tripod heads to consider. Ball heads are fairly popular in landscape photography. I think they're a good starting point until you find need for a different tripod head. So I'll do another video on tripod heads in the future where we dive into a little more details on that. One other note on tripod heads though is a lot of times it's expecting you're gonna come to the game with your own tripod head. Some of the lower priced tripods will come with a tripod head of their own. And sometimes you can even choose, do you want it to come with a ball head or a pan and tilt head? I would lean towards the ball head in that situation. Some of the problems with that is sometimes they're integrated as in you can't remove them. So you're not gonna be able to swap it. So that means if you turn out to not like that tripod head, you can't really swap it to something that you like better. Or if your tripod were fall and that head was to get damaged, you can't just replace it. I think there's a place for those. My very first tripod had an integrated tripod head with it and it was great because it was low cost, it got me in, got me using, and I didn't have so many decisions to make. I was like, I just want a tripod that works. And it got me started, and then based on what I learned with that tripod, I started to learn what I really liked and could make better choices from there. Just be aware of that. And finally, one of the last variables is gonna be price. What's your budget? How much are you gonna spend? And this can be so difficult. I still struggle with, especially beginner landscape photographers, of making good solid recommendation for a starter tripod. Um, I just find that very difficult, but price is gonna be a factor. And my recommendation is you get an idea in mind what your budget is. In my opinion, you're gonna be able to get into something pretty decent in the 500-ish dollar range and, and work from there. So if you've got that, you're probably gonna be able to find something that will work pretty well and serve you for a decent amount of time. They have tripods that are significantly two, three times more expensive than that, especially by the time you put the tripod head on. And then they've got tripods that are half or even less than that. If you're really looking for a budget beginner tripod, I think you're probably gonna be spending around $200. Like I said, if you find one of those integrated deals, find one on sale, you can probably get the whole kit for 200. But the key is, again, you take all of this and what you do is you start first with some of the features that we've talked about. We talked about size, we talked about weight, Talk about whether you want a center column or not. Talk about some of those utility features, like what kind of leg locks do you want? Does it have a bubble level on it? What's the load capacity? So if you take that information and start figuring out what you want, and start plugging that in, you're gonna come down to sort of this range of specs of what you want. And that's gonna help narrow it down. Now you can apply your budget to it and figure out which tripod is gonna work for your budget and meet your needs. So even though you might be down in that $200, $225 range, you should be able to shrink that list down to tripods that fit what you want and give you the most chance of success when you start out with a tripod. If you're in that mid range to upper range, the same thing applies, just you're gonna probably get a better fit and finish, probably better durability, probably a better warranty, certain upgraded features, 
fenders, like the leg locks are gonna be aluminum instead of having a rubber coating over them or a rubber band around them, which can come loose and make it hard to tighten things up. You know, there is an element of you get what you pay for, but I think once you're around that five to $600 range, you're in a pretty good space to start looking. You don't necessarily need the $1,200 tripods. I've been real happy with some of my mid-range ones. But again, if you're a beginner, you're starting out, you're not 100% sure you're gonna stick with this, but you wanna give it a fair shot. I think if you start looking in that $200 range, you'll be okay. I'm very wary of the dirt cheap tripods as you'll find you know on Amazon or something like that because they're just they're just rickety and the whole key to having a tripod is for it to be a stable base for your camera. So you don't want to sacrifice that even to save a few dollars. You want to at least get to something that's going to give you that stable base so you can take advantage of the whole reason you bought a tripod. So those are the features to go look for. There isn't really a right wrong answer at many of those little features that I talked about. Some of it's just doing a little bit of your own research, knowing that those features exist and then determining how your landscape photography works to see which tripod fits the best. As you start to figure out those features, make your list, start looking at tripod brands that have those features, and then start applying your budget to that list of tripods to help narrow it down even further. If you apply those steps, you should be able to get yourself to a pretty decent tripod for your budget, meeting the features that you wanna have, and help hopefully simplify that whole looking at the tripod section at a camera store or a website and getting overwhelmed with all the choices and options. Should help narrow it down, and those key features will help get you started successfully. Okay, before we wrap this video up, I do wanna recommend one online resource that I find very helpful when I'm looking for a tripod as well, and that is a website called thecentercolumn.com. And they do very in-depth reviews of tripods. They haven't reviewed every single tripod out there, but they've got great lists as to the stability. They're sensitive to budgets. They have the high-end super Cadillac of tripods on there too, but they also have recommendations for some budget tripods, lesser expensive tripods, and how they do. And you can sort of see them all ranked. You can hear their commentary on it. And you can learn a lot about the things they're looking for in a tripod at sort of the technical level, at the very micro measurement level of things with tripods. So highly recommend that site anytime you're looking for a tripod, even if you don't choose one off their list, it will help you understand what else you should be looking for in a tripod. So highly recommend that. I will link to them down in the description below, but the centercolumn.com, highly recommend taking a look at that site when you're in the market for a tripod. So hopefully you found some of this information helpful, get you started on picking out your tripod or upgrading your tripod for your landscape photography. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching.